Welcome to the StockMatter.com here in the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. I am your Stock Matter Brian Johnson, and we had yet another red candle a day. Okay, this was more uh, along the lines of what I had been watching for. As we headed uh, downwards yesterday, I wanted to see if the bulls were going to just scream back in quickly and buy it right back up, but apparently not quite yet so this is very good this is actually really good for the for the uh, bears this is precisely what we have been wanting to see if you were bearish on the markets and now we finally get some sort of confirmation based on yesterday's move a uh, quick look at the uh, internals certainly shows me that it isn't near as strong today as it was yesterday so the internals didn't necessarily uh, confirm all that we saw today in the markets in respect to this push to the downside. I'm not real happy about that, but uh, in the in overall, it really doesn't mean anything. Down is still down, and we are down for the day. So we took uh, the Nasdaq once again, taking a pretty healthy beat in here. Uh, the Dow being second, and then the S&P being, if you will say, the strongest, I guess, for the day. Down just eight points today on the S&P, holding that 1300, 1305-ish level pretty well by the time it was all said and done. Okay, so let's just take a look at the Dow. You can see the big run down, lots of little red candles, which is not uh, what we've been accustomed to. Usually we see a bunch of white candles. Here we are, finally on the other side of that play. And more important, what do we do? That's right. We close below the 20-day moving averages. Okay, now, for anybody that's followed me for any length of time, you know I like to give the benefit of the doubt to the other side. So I will give the bulls a day or so to maybe see if they can't squeak their way back up above that 20-day moving average. But if we can hold down here, the bears are definitely, definitely starting to maybe uh, show a little bit of strength. That, that would actually be very good for the Bears if we can stay below that 20-day moving average. We have this one big move and this next big move coming all the way back down. Not quite hitting this level here yet. Very, very close to it, though. Breaking other levels of support on the way down and more to the tune of what I had been talking about. Two candles to the downside have wiped out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or so candles to the upside. This is why it's so much fun to play the Bear uh, the bear uh, runs. NASDAQ 60 minute. This is this one really took a thumping today, too. <clears throat> After its big run yesterday, it did have a little bit of a bounce right down here, kind of at this gap fill area. But not a huge move back to the upside quite yet. The NASDAQ still showing quite a bit of weakness here, even on the daily now. Close below the 20 yesterday and a second close below it today, almost seeing a close below the 50 becoming very, very uh, bearish in the last couple days. So once again, you know, the market internals didn't quite do what I wanted them to do, but I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. I'm going to focus on what the charts are showing me, and that is breaks of these major levels that we had been talking about for a while. The NASDAQ is certainly one of the leaders when it comes to this. Here's another great example of why the bear side can be a lot of fun to play if you know what you're doing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12, 13, basically 14 candles. Three weeks, pretty much, of trading wiped out in two days. I told you I really thought when the move happened it would be fast, it would be pretty volatile. Sure enough, we're seeing it. Mostly reflected or best reflected in the NASDAQ. The other indices haven't quite followed as strongly yet. But you can see why the bear side can be a lot of fun to play if you know what you're doing here. Uh, two days down, wiped out 14 days, which is ultimately with five-day trading weeks, basically three weeks of trading completely destroyed in two days by the bears from a weekly two looking very very weak down in here still got a couple days left you know how i am about those weeklies like to wait until towards the end of the week to really start di uh, uh, kind of diagnosing what's going on here but you can see us maybe approaching could reach this area right back here the 20 week moving averages now so they haven't been there in a while very very logical place to see these things uh, go to if we proceed further to the downside. I like what I'm seeing so far. Not, like I said, real happy with the internals, but not going to worry about that right yet. <clears throat> S&P, straight down. 
Bouncing off this 1300 mark, hope you had your lines drawn in from my charts. You can see how well that held today. Almost a perfect, perfect bounce off of that today. And then right back up into that 1310, 1312 area, which was something I've been watching with my subscribers. And you can see why we got right back down, bounced right back up into that area, and it held very nicely right down here as so far <clears throat> overhead resistance. Interesting to note that we did close above the 200 period moving average here on the 60 minute chart, but a perfect bounce off this lower level here would have given you guys some really nice entries. We've been following along. We've had breaks below 1325, 1320, some other breaks down in here, uh, giving you opportunities to trade short and good target areas for those trades to go to. The bounce today didn't really get that far. Bounced off 1300, was only up seven points for the time being. Maybe we see a further push to the upside watching these areas if that happens but right now I'm just gonna go with what what I see in front of me and that is things are looking good so far to the bear side SPX daily here as well the close below the 20 day but not below these larger areas of lower support NASDAQ did it SPX has not so <laughs> we're still I mean it's one of those uh, dumb and dumber moments, you know, where the bulls have a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Well, yeah, actually, there is a chance. And this is why now that we have one close below the 20 day, I'm going to give the bulls a, a day or so to get themselves back up and above that area. I always give the benefit. We saw it here. Look, drop down, and they were able to pull it back the following day uh, in, in, uh, down in here. So I like to give them at least a day or so. If we can stay below these 20-day moving averages and more important get some closes back below here yeah okay now maybe uh, now we've definitely got more opportunity I shouldn't say now maybe we can because we've had opportunity to trade short up here but now we've got even more opportunities available to us to get short the market maybe play this thing back as far as this and possibly deeper here before it's all over with <clears throat> VIX daily also showing me what exactly what I want to see markets down VIX up yay finally seen it breaking above this channel area we've been following for a while look how it stopped at the 200 here um, looking for continued pushes to the upside and or to be quite honest with you guys if we can just stay above this 1920 a 19 and 20 ish mark I'd be okay with that as well we don't have to necessarily get back uh, or, or continue to rise if the markets go down if we can stay even sideways here that's fine with me now that we've reached this overhead area in the VIX same on the weekly yes it stopped at the 200 on the daily and the 50 on the weekly right at this overhead area I had drawn in as well that's fine that's fine uh, what I don't want to see from the VIX is a sudden shift to the downside where it gets back into this area if we'll stay right in around the 21 22 area yeah that's still actually pretty bearish for the market so I'm uh, I'm gonna be watching this you guys can watch the VIX too over the next couple days but this is ultimately what you're really wanting to uh, to look at is do we stay up in these areas coming into the end of the week Apple 60 minute okay guess what it was up it was up four bucks today so Apple showing some strength even though the Nasdaq fell apart uh, Apple's kind of showing a little bit of strength but it had been dropping before the Nasdaq drop so it was due for a little bit of a bounce before the rest of the markets were it didn't go anywhere though guys it came right back up into where overhead resistance uh, so things tides could be turning here on Apple we've seen this is what we were watching we got the drop yesterday right into and on the 50-day moving average looking for breaks below here now we got a little bounce today but it wasn't a major bounce by any means really need to see this thing get back up into here but I'm not so sure that even if it does it won't be uh, it won't hold up here towards the 20 day moving averages so any further push to the upside this is your next level right around 350 ish to be watching still a ways off good seven bucks away drops back below here probably another opportunity to either get out of a little bit of longs and apple if you uh, want to take you know a little bit off the table that's not a bad place to be looking to do it and or get short on the apple side from the weekly too we'll wait but you can see back in that uh, formation we've been following for a while fas down another one and a half percent today but following the ta pretty much perfectly coming right back into the 50 bouncing right off of that the 50 being 29.92 the low of the day being uh 29.92 so in this case right to the penny just a perfect perfect mark now look where it went to the upside 3206 
and what was the high for the day? 32. So we didn't quite make that. Um, oh, sorry, the low for the day was 29.91. So we're a penny this way and six pennies that way. But you can see we're really just trapped. We're stuck between support and resistance right in through here. Still looking for breaks below here and breaks above here now. <clears throat> As it consol potentially consolidates now over the next couple days, your breaks are still, I think, pretty well defined right here. Above here and below there for your trades up and down. FAZ on the 60 minute, continuing this move to the upside, liked it above eight bucks. We got there, but you can see we didn't hold there. By the end of the day, we kind of came back. We're still up um, almost 2% as well on the, FA, uh, on the FAZ. If you took trades up and over eight bucks, you know, we want to put a 20 cent stop on that and look to maybe protect that as we came into some overhead resistance here. If we just flip to the daily, you can see what I was looking for was pushes up and over that 20 day moving average. We got that today. There was entries above eight bucks. You got an opportunity to play. You got an opportunity to take profits. Even if you waited till the end of the day, you still made 16 cents here. And I'm still watching these overhead areas. So we talked about eight dollars. We talked about eight fifty, and we talked about nine bucks. Those are still going to be the overhead overhead areas for, for me to watch as well as of course the 50 okay so you've got three areas above you looking for some potential trades in those areas but I would wait for obviously breaks at this point <clears throat> things look pretty good decent anyway I'm not saying that you know this is any major move Faz is going back to 15 or anything like that. I certainly don't see that in the cards quite yet. Matter of fact, we haven't broken this channel down here, so I, I have no reason to jump and scream and holler about it, but there have been opportunities. Above 8 bucks would have been my first shot at it. Above 850, above 875, and above 9 bucks. Those are the places you're looking at for potential targets and or entries uh, going forward in FAZ. Uh, you got it, and I told you what to look for in FAS. I think it's pretty; it's a little bit more defined uh, on FAS from a standpoint of one uh, one area or another. That's it. Okay, that'll do it for today's video. Be back with you again tomorrow. Still looking to see if we don't get maybe some consolidation tomorrow, and or further pushes to the downside. I like it below these levels. Have them marked. Have them ready. Now, at any point, we can get the big candle wick where it drops and then it comes back up. Always something to look for. Uh, for. Um, but if you're day trading, that's good, still good opportunities for you to take a little bit of money out of the markets, especially to the short side. Talk to you guys again tomorrow night. Bye.